I have had the chance to experience a few pretty intense coasters in my time as an enthusiast, and today I will be discussing in no particular order some of the most intense roller coasters I've personally experienced to date. Enjoy. Before getting into my actual list, I just have to give an honorable mention to one ride, or as I would rather refer to it as, a dishonorable mention. This is Nighthawk at Carowinds. I felt as though I had to include this ride on this list because it is so intense. But in my opinion, that is not a good thing. I did not enjoy this ride, so therefore it is a dishonorable mention, but it is a very intense ride, and I am aware that many people love this ride, so you may or may not like this ride. For me, I did not enjoy it. Starting off the proper list here, we have Maverick at Cedar Point. Maverick is just a really intense Intamin Blitz coaster, the first Blitz coaster actually opened in 2007, has lots of low to the ground twisting turns you're just snapping from left to right and then over some awesome airtime hills there's a couple inversions in there. The inversions certainly aren't a highlight of this ride but they're not bad and of course it's a multi-launch that launch right in the middle of the ride that launches you to 70 miles an hour. That launch is incredible in my opinion. The first drop on this ride is amazing, has a 95 degree drop. This ride just does not let up, and it is absolutely phenomenal. Lots of great positive force, lots of awesome ejector airtime, particularly the first hill after the first drop, and the ejector hill at the end of the ride. There's a stangle dive in there. This ride just throws you from left to right, up, down. It is just incredible. Next up is the most recent coaster I've ridden. This is Lightning Rod at Dollywood. Now, I'm sure this was a little bit more intense in previous years before it got adjusted due to reliability issues, but this is still an incredibly intense ride. One of the most intense I've been on for sure. Lightning Rod just mainly has tons of ejector airtime, and it throws you around quite a bit in the best way possible. Really forceful in the way that you get ejected out of your seat and I love that. I love sustained ejector airtime specifically, and Lightning Rod provides a lot of sustained ejector airtime, as well as some good pops of ejector airtime, such as in the quad down. Lightning Rod really is not the most diverse ride, but is very intense, and it's an awesome ride. Afterburn at Carowinds is a B&M inverted coaster. I've been on three of these so far. All of them are very intense. And Afterburn is certainly no exception. I grayed out at the bottom of the Batwing element on every single one of my rides. That really took me by surprise. I didn't really hear a whole lot about this ride going into it, so I thought it was an underrated coaster after I rode it, because I just didn't hear much about it, and then I was just completely blown away after my first ride, and I was like, that was ridiculous. I got many more rides on it after that. Smooth, super intense fast, whippy, awesome pacing. It's just a phenomenal ride. Afterburn is a really, really good coaster. One of the best rides at Carowinds. Definitely do not skip out on Afterburn. Up next, we have what is known by many to be the most intense coaster out there. This is Intimidator 305 at King's Dominion. Wow, this ride is just, there's, there's no words for how intense this is. This is really just something you have to experience for yourself. The first turn after the 300 foot drop, of course, a lot of people gray out on that. I grayed out every single time on every one of my seven rides. I never did fully black out, but one time I felt pretty close and I certainly grayed out quite a bit on every single ride. And then the rest of the ride too just does not let up. The only real moment you have to sort of take in everything that's happening is the two airtime hops around the middle of the ride, but even those are pretty crazy too. This is really similar to Maverick in the way that it has a lot of low to the ground twisting bank turns, except these ones, you know, you're doing them at 80 plus miles an hour, which is absolutely ridiculous. I love Intimidator 305 just for its intensity. Certainly not a diverse ride, but it is just balls to the wall intensity from start to finish. So if you like intense rides, I think you'll love Intimidator 305. Next up, we have another B&M inverted coaster. This is Banshee at Kings Island. Now, I have to say, I find it interesting with Banshee. I've heard a couple people say that they don't find Banshee to be a forceful ride. 
I've also heard somebody say that sometimes it's really intense for them and sometimes it's not. For me, every single time I ride Banshee, it is just super, super intense. That pretzel knot is insane. Uh, at the bottom of that, you just feel the blood rushing down. I mean, it is just it's so intense. You're just pressed so hard against your seat. And pretty much the whole ride is just super intense from that super steep drop at the beginning, Emmelman, the insane pretzel knot, and of course you have the amazing hang time at the end there with that inline twist. This ride is just really, really forceful in my opinion. By far, one of the most intense I've been on. The coaster that I have next is one that I think gets overlooked, especially when it comes to intensity. This is Phantom's Revenge at Kennywood. The hypercoaster that has a 228 foot drop down into a ravine goes under the Thunderbolt. At the bottom of that 228 foot drop, you're traveling at 85 miles an hour. You pull out from that drop and rise up into the banked turn. And the forces there are just absolutely incredible. I rode this for the first time in many years in 2019, and I had forgotten just how intense this ride was. It's a really, really forceful ride. And of course, there's lots of great intense ejector airtime at the end of the ride with those tiny bunny hops. So this ride is just incredible. Definitely an underrated one in my opinion as well. Up next is Top Thrill Dragster at Cedar Point. Of course, this opened as the world's tallest and fastest full circuit coaster in 2003, and it is still one of the tallest and fastest out there. This, of course, is on this list for one reason alone, that hydraulic launch. This launch still gets me. No matter how many times I ride it, I just get so nervous, so anxious just sitting there, waiting for that light. And I know once that light starts counting down, like, it's on. And uh, I just get so anxious every time we're sitting there on that launch track, and I'm just waiting for the moment that we just get absolutely catapulted all the way to 120 miles an hour in less than four seconds. It is incredible. There really isn't anything else like it. I would have to say this is probably the single most intense moment of a ride that I've experienced. It is absolutely insane. The forces that you feel on that launch are unlike anything else I've experienced. Top Thrill Dragster, definitely not for the faint of heart. The Voyage at Holiday World is a huge wooden coaster, very, very long ride, one of the longest coasters in the world actually, second longest wooden coaster right behind the Beast, and this is just a super intense, wild, out of control experience, and a lot of that does have to do with the roughness. When I rode this in 2015, it was really rough, but it was an incredible ride. Of course, there's a lot of airtime on this ride, lots of floater airtime, the airtime isn't the strongest, but what really makes this ride intense is just the sheer speed. You're just ripping through those elements, especially when you get to the turnaround way back in the woods and you go through that spaghetti bowl section of track and you're just flying through those 90 degree bank turns. And of course, all the way back to the station, you're basically going down a hill and you're just tearing through over 6,000 feet of track. It's absolutely incredible and you should definitely try to get on the voyage if you're a roller coaster enthusiast. Next, we have another Gravity Group wooden coaster I've been on, which is Ravine Flyer 2 at Waldemere. This is kind of a similar story to the Voyage, just more scaled down. Even though this ride is quite a bit smaller, much shorter than the Voyage, it still holds its own. This is a really intense ride. It has lots of great ejector airtime on this ride. Super intense, some awesome 90 degree bank turns that just dip down into the ravine. This ride is just absolutely wild. It's a wild experience, especially at night. I love the night rides on Ravine Flyer 2. And a Ravine Flyer 2 is simply another coaster that I think everybody should get to at some point. To finish off the list here, there is another ride that I find to be pretty underrated especially when it comes to its sheer intensity, and that is Dominator at King's Dominion. Of course, this was originally at Giaga Lake. I actually got to ride it at Giaga Lake and King's Dominion, and it's always been one of my favorite rides. I love Dominator. It's pretty smooth for the most part. It's still the longest floorless coaster in the world, even though it originally opened in 2000. So that's pretty incredible in itself. But there are a couple moments on this ride where I grayed out, and that really took me by surprise when I rode it last year. I forgot how intense the ride was because it had been 12 years since I had ridden it, and I got on it. I remember there being two gray out moments, I believe. I was not expecting that. And Dominator is just really fun, smooth, super, super intense. And it's just a really solid floorless coaster. It's personally one of my favorites. It's in my top 20. Definitely don't skip out on Dominator if you go to King's Dominion. In my opinion, it's one of the best rides there. 
that's it for my list. Be sure to let me know some of the most intense rides you've personally experienced. Be sure to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for new videos every week about roller coasters and amusement parks. Like my page Coaster Daddy on Facebook and follow me at Coaster Daddy Official on Instagram. Thanks so much for watching. This is Coaster Daddy. Bye.